And we're seeing less and less concern by broadcasters about the public interest, and more and more it's all about the bottom line. And what are the burning issues of our day? What are the issues that require considered public discussion and analysis? What are the battles for the soul of America? Campaign finance and electoral outcomes, corporate scandals, consumer rights, civil rights, environmental protections, war and peace. These issues create a fundamental conflict of interest for media companies owned by large conglomerates with deep investments in oil, pharmaceuticals, weapons, and other business enterprises. And as the rules change to allow more consolidated ownership across the country, independent voices and opinions are snuffed out and silenced. If we allow them to have their way and have this big mass control of the media, because then, because of their narrow focus, they, they will not allow for any dialogue of justice and equality for people because that's not part of their agenda. There may be hundreds of TV and radio choices and seemingly limitless offerings on the internet. But when a handful of companies control all of the top news sites and most TV stations, the range of debate narrows profoundly. There's a lot of different offerings, but a lot of them are repackaged. A lot of these stations uh, and, and, and a lot of these cable programmers are owned by the same handful of companies that dominate American broadcasting. And they also dominate the internet portals that most people use. So there's a small handful of companies, maybe five or six, that control 75% of what people hear and see in the media. Who will provide the forum for debates that critical issues require? Where will we find healthy skepticism toward corporate and governmental actions? While the media deck may seem to be stacked, there is reason for hope. You know, when we think about what's not being covered in the media, we tend to think about the cover-ups. And there's another side to it, which I think is actually, in many ways, much more dangerous, which is not hearing about the good stuff, not hearing about the successes of, of social movements. History shows that systemic change only happens when people take action. When government ignores the interests of its citizenry, people rise up. Thanks in part to the recent lifting of ownership limits by the FCC, public outcry regarding media regulation is exploding. Tens of thousands of letters have arrived at the FCC, mostly objections to the proposed rules. The federal Appeals Court in Philadelphia has temporarily blocked the government's new media ownership rules. The House voted to roll back a new FCC rule. In 2003, nearly three million Americans from across the political and economic spectrum voiced their opposition to letting media companies get bigger. The outrage people feel as they see corporations cashing in on the free flow of information has spawned a national media reform movement. Strange bedfellows have banded together to fight big media. Conservative groups like the NRA and the Parents Television Council have joined ranks with progressive and faith-based organizations. What you've seen is you've seen um, people from the left, people from the right, uh, people from the entire political spectrum um, and all different people involved in all kinds of different issues stepping up and saying, no, we think this is wrong. We think we need a media that's not more concentrated. We need a media that's less concentrated. And when public outcry reaches such a pitch, Congress begins to act. Members of the House and Senate attempted to reverse the rules. Courts postponed implementation. Media reform is fast becoming one of the biggest issues of the new century. And there's a whole movement that fought in the great upsurge of 2003, the upsurge against the relaxation of media ownership rules. Unprecedented, in decades, there'd never been anything like it. There have been tremendous gains, but there is still much for us to do. Every American must understand the importance of democratic and independent media. 
media policy debates must be made public and be covered by both mainstream and local media. Communities must have access to diverse and local media through Enhanced Community Access TV, Low Power Radio, Indie Media, and other non-commercial channels. Antitrust protections must limit media consolidation. Funding for public broadcasting and non-commercial media must be increased and insulated. The laws have to be made to protect our democracy. It's, 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 uh, it's unfortunate that the conscience of our government is, is more directed to commercial uh, philosophy. Commercial carpet bombing of our children at home and in schools must be stopped. Our media system must better reflect the diversity that is America's greatest strength. What needs to be done is clearly the three prongs. One, you have to break up the corporate control. Two, you have to start something we've never had in our country, which is genuine public broadcasting. And three, you have to fund, subsidize, independent, nonprofit media of every type. What I do know is that if this remains a grassroots issue, well, that's the best chance for, uh, for success that we have. And I think the American people really do want to wrap their arms around this once and for all and say, OK, we're going to decide the future of the airwaves here and how many or better, how few companies are we going to let control. People must raise their voices and say no to media monopolies, no to increasing cable and satellite rates, no to low journalistic standards, no to big media.